I remade the greatest Call of Duty map of all time in Pro Builder. In my opinion, Firing Range is the best map to come out of the Call of Duty franchise. It was made in a time when they were still making good games, a time when it seemed that player satisfaction was the number one priority on their list of criteria to produce a successful game. It's been just over a month since I started my journey of creating an FPS game. In this time, I have learned an insane amount of stuff. I've gotten carried away to some extent with the huge amount of tasks that go into making a game. I've configured a character controller for the player and some starting enemies. I've set up the animations, weapon pickups, and configured some basic AI. All this with the ops of suite of tools, which provides me with a huge set of functionality that I can use to execute on my vision. I've also started working on effects, building and reskinning 3D models. Heck, I've even completed a game design template and come up with a core game design pillar that will hopefully drive the game towards success. Most recently though, I started work on the training level of the game, a simple level that will let you test out the abilities and weapons for the character. And what I quickly realized is that you can create the most beautiful worlds and most polished character control, but without solid level design, a game cannot succeed. ProBuilder is a tool created by Unity to help developers prototype levels quickly. If you want to learn more about how to get started with it, there's a great tutorial on Bracky's channel, who would have guessed? We miss you Brackles. There are a couple of reasons I decided to start learning how to prototype maps in BroBuilder. The first and most obvious is that if I can quickly prototype levels, I can play through them and get my friends to play through them too, and help me understand if they are any good. You see, it's really difficult to separate oneself from the shortfalls of your game. Creating a game is basically like having a child. You feel attached to it, and you're impressed by everything it does, because you created it, even if what it does is super average in the eyes of everyone else. This makes it a good idea to get some feedback from outside parties as quickly into the development process as possible. Something I've found is that it's quite intimidating to look at an empty canvas and imagine a world from nothing. I could spend hours creating terrains and game art for the props and environment that would be in the map, and then realize that they don't actually fit, and I would have wasted a bunch of time on creating something that I end up not making use of. I've already fallen into this trap a couple of times in this past month, wasting hours creating unused assets. I want to use my failures to help me understand where I can improve and optimize. Having the ability to quickly create blockouts of maps will help me avoid spending unnecessary time on making models and environments that just don't work. This, I feel, is crucial for saving time as a solo indie dev. It's one of those weird things in life. Whilst it feels like you're wasting time on creating something that you're just going to throw away, it will, on the contrary, help you to save time in the long run. Well, I hope so anyway, that's the theory. In the time it took me to create and test this remake of Firing Range, I've come across some interesting issues with my character controller. For example, steps and their size proved to be an interesting challenge for the character. This was something I was not aware of until now. I'm glad I figured this out early as it gives me a good understanding of the limitations of the basic mechanics of my character. This will help me to make vital decisions in my level design process going forward. I also realized that there are spots in a map like this that my player would not currently be able to reach because I've not yet implemented the ability to climb ladders. Whilst this sounds obvious, due to the sheer amount of things to do, it's easy to overlook some things. Anyway, this gives me a good sense of what I still need to work on in terms of movement mechanics. Map flow was something that the devs in the early Call of Duty games excelled at. I'm not yet a seasoned level designer, and I think the best way to learn how to create a good map is to use their implementations as examples for my own. Analyzing a map like Firing Range, it is based on a simple flow. When the player spawns, they can choose to go in three directions, heading towards three crucial areas where battles could take place. It is extremely simple, but also very well thought out. They are good areas for cover, and if the player makes good decisions when transitioning between each phase of the map, they can put themselves in great positions to dominate. The design of this flow encourages the player to move forward and constantly be in the action. It also provides players with different play styles the ability to get to positions which would benefit them. The sniper tower is a good example as a spot for the player who is less rush focused, with good positions for the opposition to counter their position as well. This is what I mean by well thought out map flow. Whilst my AI is still in its infancy, having a map like this will give me a good opportunity to create scenarios which can properly test the intelligence of my AI. Simple things like if my NPCs can properly traverse all of the surfaces I have created are things I will need to continuously test. 
I have started implementing patrol instructions and ways for the NPCs to spot the player and start their attacks. I also want to have various types of enemies, those who can use magic abilities and fire them at players from range, as well as those who run directly at the player and swing their arms to cause them damage. Being able to quickly prototype my levels will help me to understand how much effort is still required to get my NPCs working to a standard that I am happy with. Another key aspect of my game is that the player will have various abilities that they can use to fight enemies or get away quickly. So far, I have only implemented the dash ability, but having abilities like this will add a lot to the overall play experience. However, due to the movement-based nature of the abilities I have in mind, the maps I create will play a huge part in keeping the experience fun and fast-paced. If I clutter the environment with too many items, the player will struggle to move around. However, if there are too few, the levels might prove to be too easy. I will need to find a good balance between too cluttered and too empty. I want the player to be able to develop their skills as they progress through the game. Not just with simple level up mechanics, but with good decision making and forming a good understanding of when using each ability might benefit them. I have not yet decided on the entire workflow for level design, but right now I am thinking that I will need to create at least 3 blockout variants of each map. Once I've decided on a variant that will work, I will need to create the environment as well as surf the asset store for props that will fit well into my scene. If I am unable to find the perfect assets, I will need to create them myself. And if I purchase assets, I might need to consider reskinning them to keep the look of the game as unique as possible. Once I'm happy with the assets, I will swap the blockouts with the pretty looking things. Man, it all sounds so simple. Something that is important for me to keep in mind is that my game is not a multiplayer team deathmatch style shooter. Instead, it will be a single player focused experience, which does mean that the AI will need to be top notch, the puzzles I create will need to be fun, and the levels I create will need to work well for all of these scenarios. I do think though that the fundamentals still apply. I will need to find a way to help the player along through the level by creating good flow. There will be some modifications that will be required, like giving the player the ability to make their own decisions, whilst also not making it too difficult to understand what they need to do to progress. AI is the next item on my list of things to focus on. That, alongside some good level design, will form the basis of what comes next in this devlog series. Until then though, I'll catch you on the next one.